Hey guys, welcome to SparkPoint. Today's video is for all of you UX UI designers out there. I'll be showing you briefly how to mock up UI animations inside of Adobe After Effects. Now, if you're a UX UI designer and you're new to After Effects and you're hoping to learn After Effects, I'll put a shameless plug in here for my course on Udemy that specifically focuses on After Effects for UX UI designers. If you wanna check that out, the link is in the description down below. Now in this video, we're just gonna be doing a simple walkthrough of how I would set up a mockup for a user interface inside of Adobe After Effects. You'll probably want to know some After Effects basics to follow along here, but not necessary if you're just trying to look and see what's possible. So with that said, let's jump into it. So jumping right into it, I've got this app here that I designed. It's just a simple recipe app that I kind of created for fun. And as an example, I'm gonna be showing you how to animate this list scrolling up and down, and then one of these little recipe cards being tapped on. So like I said, I wanna animate a scroll with all of these cards, kind of like a thumb is scrolling down the list of recipes here. So to do that, I'm just going to take all of these different cards, I'm gonna find all of these layers associated with that, and I'm going to group them together or pre-compose them together. So let me come down here into my timeline and I'm gonna find all of the layers here that are associated with all of these cards up here. So that's all of these layers down here. I'm gonna right click these and pre-compose and we'll call this scroll. I'll go ahead and hit okay. And we've now got all of our recipe cards inside of its own group or its own composition. Now from this point, I can double click on this composition and pull those cards up by themselves. I actually have more cards that I want to add to the bottom here to kind of complete a full scroll through. So I'm gonna hit Command K, and that will bring up my composition settings. And I'm just gonna adjust this height, change it to 2000, give myself a lot of space to work with here. And I've got a bunch of blank space at the bottom here now. And I've got another composition with some more cards that I'm just going to copy over. So I'm gonna copy all of this over with the exception of my background layer. And I will paste it in my scroll composition that we just created. And I'm just gonna position all of these down at the bottom here. We're basically just extending the length of this scroll. So back in my main screen page, now if I move that composition up, you can see I've got some more stuff to scroll through. Now I do need to mask some of this out because as you can see, when I move that up, this text is showing up right on top of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to create a rectangle about that size. But I'm just gonna position it right above my first recipe card right here. And then down here in the layers, I'm going to move this layer on top of my scroll composition that we created earlier. And with this track mat column open, and you might need to click this toggle switches slash modes button down here to get this track mat column to show up. But with that scroll composition selected, I'll come over here to track mat and we'll do alpha inverted mat shape one. So now if I scroll this up, you can see that it's cutting off right where I've got that track mat or that shape up here and it's invisible now you can't see that shape but I can now scroll through perfectly so now we're gonna animate this to animate this it's quite simple all I'm going to do is hit P on my keyboard and that will pull up my position property and over here we've got this little keyframe stopwatch you may be familiar with this hopefully you already are familiar with keyframing inside of After Effects well, I'll go ahead and click that stopwatch to enable keyframing on my position property. And then with my timeline marker, I'll drag that forward to about the two second mark or so. And I'm just going to move this whole composition down so that I can see my last recipe card there just popping up. And now I'm just gonna drag this back and hit space on my keyboard to play this animation. As you can see, it's fairly boring right now. What we're gonna do is we're going to ease this animation. So I want to leave my first keyframe unchanged, but the second keyframe I want to do what's called easing. And hopefully this is a concept you're familiar with, but essentially 
I'm just going to slow down the acceleration before this keyframe key comes to a stop. So to do that, I can do standard easy ease, which for me is FN, F9 on my keyboard. And you can see that that changed to an hourglass shape. That means it is now eased. That is just applying standard easing. Now I can change the ease on this a little bit more so, and that's more so what we're gonna want to do is change the influence to make it a little stronger. So we'll right click this keyframe, go to keyframe velocity, and you see that the influence is set to 33%. That's easy ease, that's standard easing. I'm gonna change this to 80% on both of those. And now if I play this back, you can see it starts out a lot quicker and then kind of slows down to a stop. Now this animation is going a little bit long, so I'm just gonna drag this keyframe back a little bit and I'll go ahead and play it back. And that looks pretty good. That looks like a thumb kind of flicked the screen and it scrolled down. That's the exact effect that we're trying to go for. So now I immediately want to have this scroll back up. So all I need to do is copy my position keyframes. Do Command C, Command V, and I'll right click them with them still selected. I'll go to Keyframe Assistant and Time Reverse Keyframes. So now if I play this back, we've got it scrolling down and then scrolling back up. The only issue is now our easing is reversed. We want to reverse our easing here. So with this keyframe selected, this first keyframe before it starts scrolling back up, I'm going to hold Command or Control if you're on Windows and click that, that will remove the easing and we're going to ease this other keyframe right here by, of course, first hitting F9 on our keyboard, and then we'll right click, go to keyframe velocity, and change our influence to 80% on both of those, incoming and outgoing. So now scrolling back up looks exactly like it scrolls down, looks like a thumb flicked the screen. Next, we're gonna have this card tapped on right here, and it's gonna slide over to reveal a full recipe page. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to create a new composition by hitting my new composition button down here, and we'll call this master comp. And the, the height doesn't need to be quite as intense as it is. I'm just gonna move this to a thousand for now until I can figure out what my actual composition should be. I'll go ahead and in my comps folder over here, I've got my main screen comp, which we just animated. That's the composition that we just animated. And I'm gonna drag that into my master composition. And you can see we've got a little bit of room on the top here. My dimension should be 844 on the height. So I'm gonna hit Command K again and change the height to 844. And I think we are good to go. I just need to reposition this a little bit and we're good to go. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create the slide over. So I'm gonna come forward in time just after it finishes scrolling back up, the animation that we just finished, and I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard again to bring up the position property. And remember, we are outside in a different composition now. We created a master composition and we brought our main screen composition in here, and we're now animating that main composition. So with position keyframing enabled, gonna move forward just a little bit, maybe a second or so, and I'm gonna move this over so it's just out of view, just out of frame. And then over here, I've got a recipe card page, and I'm gonna drag that in here. And now what I'm gonna do is with the scroll over happening, now it's outside of frame over here, make sure that it is the case that it's actually over here. I'm going to parent my new recipe screen to the main screen composition here. So you should see this little pick whip here. You'll take that and drag it and attach it to the main screen composition. So now what happens, since we've animated this, if you play this back, it should be attached and you don't have to reanimate anything. Now real quick, I've got like this little black gap right here. I don't really want that, so I'm just going to create a background solid real quick by coming up to Layer, New, and Solid. I'm just gonna create a white solid and hit OK. And I'll move that to the bottom. That way we're not seeing any kind of gaps here. But we want to ease these keyframes. So go ahead and highlight those and hit F9. We'll right click them, 
go to keyframe velocity and we'll change the influence to 80% like we've done on some other layers. So now if I play that back, looks pretty smooth. We've got the scroll up and the pan over. So next I wanna make it look like this card at the top here has been tapped on before the actual slide over happens. So we'll come back just before the slide on happens and we'll go back into our main screen composition and we need to go into our scroll composition. And this is where we can find our recipe right there, our recipe card. So I want to animate the scale of this instead of the position. So I'll hit S on my keyboard. That will pull up the scale property. I'll go ahead and enable keyframing there. And I'll come forward just about 10 frames or so. Just want to make it a short little animation. I'm going to change this to 12% just scaling it down slightly is all we're doing. Let me zoom in so I can see a little better here. But if I play that back, that's what we've got right now. I'm going to ease that real quick by hitting Fn, F9. And it's happening just a little too slow, so I'm just gonna drag these keyframes closer together. That looks pretty good. I also want it to fade when it gets tapped on. So in addition to it scaling down, I want it to fade. So I'll go ahead and hit T on my keyboard and that will bring up my opacity property. I'll go ahead and keyframe that. And if I hit U with this layer selected, it's going to pull up any keyframes that exist on this layer. So now I can see my scale and I just wanna line up my opacity animation with that scale animation. So the last keyframe there, I'll go ahead and set this to 50 and now we've got it fading. So if I come back to my master composition over here, that gets clicked on and then it slides over or tapped, I should say. If I play this whole thing back, we've got a scroll down, a scroll back up and a tap happening. Now there's seriously unlimited possibilities on how you can animate things inside of After Effects. This is just one example and hopefully you can get an idea of what's possible in After Effects. And hopefully this helped you out a little bit if you're trying to animate your own UI designs. Now before finishing up here, I just want to show you real quick how we would kind of mock this up in a final polished package. On top of like a phone stock image or something like that. So I'll come over here into my demo layer that I've already got or my demo composition that I've already set up. Now I just created this inside of Adobe Illustrator. I didn't want to get in trouble with any copyright issues or anything like that. Um, but you could use stock imagery here. Now, what we need to do is we need to bring our master composition in here and we need to kind of form it to this phone. So I'll find my master comp over here and we'll drag it in there. And then over here in my effects and presets panel, I'm gonna search for corner pin and we're gonna go ahead and drag that effect on here. And what that's going to do is it's just going to give me some corner pins that I can use to distort this and kind of form it to the shape of my phone here. So I'm just dragging these corners around and kind of making it fit the shape of my phone. Now you could sit here for a while and make this perfect. I'm not going to make it that perfect but you kind of get the idea here. And then we need to kind of get these edges cut off so it doesn't look so ugly. Luckily for me, I created a layer that I can use as a mask that fits this phone shape and has like the little notch cut out up here. So I've put that layer on top of my master comp layer. That's where all of our animation is living. And again, just like we did before, I'm gonna use the track mat functionality here. And with this drop down selected, I'm going to hit alpha mat layer three. Now you can see our final animations are living inside of this phone. So if I play that back, kind of a fun way to show off your UI animations. All right, that's it. Hopefully that was helpful for all you UX UI designers out there. And again, shameless plug, if you wanna know more about After Effects and specifically for UX UI design, go and check my course out on Udemy. It's gonna get you up and running if you're a UX UI designer, and it's gonna get you the basics of After Effects, and you should be able to create anything you want after that. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please thumbs up this video and of course subscribe if you want more awesome After Effects content. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next one.